All right, I'm John Kurtz, back here live from Big 12 Media Days in Arlington, and uh, I've got Shahan J. Raja with me from uh, CBS Sports. Love watching his work, and uh, everybody out there should be following him for college football right now. And it's been a really interesting time here, Big 12 Media Days, over the last couple of days. I know you're a national guy, so you're coming in for some of the big national stories, but just what do you, how do you summarize what your experience has been like here over the last couple of days? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I think that this is one of the better uh, Media Days events that they pull it on. Um, you know, I've been to SEC, I've been to Pac-12. I think this is one of the best that they do. And uh, I think the thing that really just overarches this whole thing is I feel like the Big 12 is as sort of like strong and united, I guess I'd say, and, and looking forward to the future more than I've ever felt it before. Uh, you know, I, I came into this kind of thing that it was going to be a lot about Texas and Oklahoma, that it was going to be a lot about beef and pettiness and all this sort of stuff, but everybody kind of feels like they're just ready to move on. And I think that that's one, a good sign for Texas and Oklahoma, but I think it's also a good thing for the conference as well. Who do you feel like it's kind of a power vacuum, right, with those two leaving? Who do you feel like is most poised out of this league to step into it? Well, I do think that one of the draws of the league is that there won't be one team or two team that kind of build into that. I think it's going to be very coach specific. I think it's going to be very program specific uh, and kind of about these individual moments. Uh, short term, I think you do have to look at Kansas State as one of the more consistent brands in the conference. We'll kind of see, you know, I think the question about them is going to be what's the top, right? What is it? Is it the playoff? I mean, certainly in a 12 team world, you expect that to be the case. But Kansas State, I think, is going to be there every year. I think Baylor and TCU have some unique advantages just in terms of resource and uh, location, things like that. Um, and, and then I think that you even look at programs that are coming in like UCF. UCF, I think, has a very unique place in the Big 12 that they embrace. And the way that they're able to position themselves is almost, you know, after you go past Florida, Florida State and the state of Florida, I think they could be third priority in a lot of years. And especially with a coach like Gus Malzahn, it gives them a good opportunity to build a specific brand. Are they the clear answer to you, team with the most potential out of the new four that are coming in? So long term, uh, you know, I think that there's some questions. Short term, I think there's absolutely the case. Uh, you know, they've got a great coaching staff. Uh, they're the only program when you look at this upcoming season that returns a quarterback. And I think that the thing you look at, too, is over the past couple of years, they've built up from a recruiting perspective in a different kind of way than those other three programs. Now, these other three programs have done a good job. But look at the transfer classes, look at the recruiting classes, uh, look at the 247 talent composite, for example. I mean, UCF is already in the middle of the Big 12 from that perspective, and it'll only continue to go up. This last year, they got a defensive lineman named John Walker, who was the number 95 player in the country, the top recruit in UCF history, and I think that's only going to compound forward. So I think that they are probably best poised to have a specific moment and a specific strategy. You can't look past Houston. You know, I'm, I'm curious long term whether Dana Holgerson's the guy to kind of bring that there, but I think they have a lot of potential if they continue to invest. And I mean, look, even BYU and Cincinnati, they hold specific roles. Cincinnati, in that same way, there's never been a second Power Five program in the state of Ohio. And Ohio is a great recruiting ground. BYU has a national brand. So it's a long winded answer. Yeah. I think UCF has the best chance, but all four, it really would not surprise me if very soon they were all competing at the top of the conference. Yeah, do you expect a decent amount of growing pains coming into the league? Yeah, especially for those non-UCF schools. I think it's going to be pretty brutal in year one. Um, obviously, Cincinnati having to replace a head coach is going to be difficult, and it was already going to be a transition year for them. Uh, when you look at, I think, uh, you know, BYU, they're used to playing four or five big games a year. Well, looking at their schedule, there are 10 teams that have the potential to beat BYU. And uh, I know that I've talked to people on that staff. They felt like after that Baylor game last year, they were just so physically beat up because of how physical Baylor is. Mm -hmm. Well, Baylor finished 6-7 and seven last year in the Big 12, and I think that it's going to be a good test for them to kind of get to that point. So I think that UCF is the best prepared for that, and I think that the other three especially. I mean, if any of them can make a bowl game, I think that should be considered a good season. So Texas, we have 14 years of data now that would suggest picking them to win the league is not the right move, right? I've kind of compared this to, like, if you pick anyone other than Kansas to win the league in basketball, it's usually a losing <laughs> proposition. But Texas has been anointed the, the preseason favorite here, and I understand with their roster, right? But is this the time to really believe in Sark and Texas to take the next step? Well, so there's plenty of reasons to think that it's going to not work out exactly that way, that way right? I mean, TCU finished 12-0 in the, in the conference and still didn't win the league, right? So it's always going to be a crapshoot at the very end of the year, but I do think they deserve to have the expectations of being there. And so I think that when you look at it, 
I would make the argument that maybe three of the top five players in the league arguably play at the University of Texas. Linebacker Jalen Ford, uh, tight end Jatavian Sanders, and left tackle Kelvin Banks. I think that those might be three of the five best in the league. And I didn't mention some of the bigger names that they have there who I think are still figuring things out. Yeah. So. I, they are at the top of a development cycle right now uh, across their roster and outside of maybe Kansas State who's replacing a, a couple key pieces, I don't see another program that clearly is. And that will get, that's what makes me think that they need to be the favorite in the league, why they should be the favorite in the league. That doesn't mean they're going to win the league. That's, you know, last year Baylor was picked to win the league and they finished 6-7. and seven. This year Texas is picked to win the league. I, I mean, we haven't had... A, a, an incredibly clean answer, especially since uh, obviously Oklahoma has kind of fallen from atop that perch. So you never know what's going to happen, but I think that this should be the team that's picked first in the Big 12. And so if Texas, Oklahoma is like that tier one, I think to me one of the more difficult questions is who's, who's the top of tier two? How would you answer that? Who is the top of that next tier in the Big 12? Well, I think that heading into this year, uh, are you talking this year? More? This year. This yeah, year. This so season, yeah. I, I actually probably wouldn't even put Oklahoma in the top tier. I, I think that, you know, their schedule is going to give them a chance to, to be there. I still have a lot of questions about this team. You know, they lost their top receiver, their top rusher, uh, and, and it was from an offense that really struggled situationally at times, too. So I'd put them in the second group. I wouldn't put them cleanly in the, in the top group. I would put Kansas State right now in the top group over Oklahoma. Um, I think that Kansas State, I mean, I don't need to tell this program, you know, they have a lot coming back, a great offensive line. Uh, I like who they have at running back. I, I think they need to develop some of those dynamic pieces, but that's something I trust them to do at a pretty high level. Will Howard, I think, is, is uh, to me, one of the better quarterbacks in the league. And so they're in my top group. You know, the second group, like you said, is hard. I, I have Oklahoma there. I have Texas Tech actually maybe riding some close game luck, like we've seen teams do in previous years, uh, and, and having experience at that quarterback position. And then I, I think that one of Baylor or TCU will manage to break into that group as well. I don't, I, I think I lean Baylor, but it's going to be pretty tight as well. So it's interesting, a school that doesn't come up there is Oklahoma State. And that, that's a tough read, man. Yeah. Everything that happened in the portal and Mike Gundy, I, I just wonder how much longer he is for this college football yeah. world as it's currently constituted. What do you make of the situation that Oklahoma State's in? Well, I like some of the stuff that I've heard coming out because Look, after last year, I wondered if that was rock bottom, right? Uh, and even worse, I wondered if it wasn't rock bottom, <laughs> yeah. right? And so, I mean, and, and look, when rock bottom's seven and six, that's, that's pretty good, right? That's a testament to what he's done with that program. Um, they were very aggressive. They obviously reshaped a lot of their roster, some because they had to, some because they wanted to. You know, defensively, he's decided he's going to move to more of that 3-3-5 with bringing in a, an unknown guy from the Division II level, but one who he likes a lot. And then offensively, you know, we, we saw uh, The Athletic did some reporting, right? And they're going to run a little bit more uh, multiple. They're not just going to be so spread like they've been in years past in order to try to adjust to this new Big 12. So I think that there are growing pains this year. And they're so dependent on Alan Bowman to be the guy at quarterback. And he's been injury prone. But, you know, look, this is a team that's probably going to be just above bowl eligibility, I'd say. Uh, the upside is always going to be there with a Mike Gundy team. And look, if you had asked me in 2021, I wouldn't have had them in the Big 12 title game. But uh, I do think it's going to be a tough year for them.